Hello everybody, it's Ocelot, and welcome to part 3, the last part to our beginner Nagakiba Bloodfame build. First of all, I'd like to thank everybody that's viewed the first two videos. I am Shall very surprised and overwhelmed at the reactions that. that people have given in the comments. Thank you for all the suggestions and the criticism. Goodbye. Let's hope this video is better than the first two. In the last video, we ended with fighting the fire giant, so Melina has given herself up. We are starting at Crumbling Faramazula. Our first goal is going to get our Nagakiba up to plus 25. So we'll need two Smithing Stone 8s. Luckily there's one right away. And further in past the Beastmen, there will be another one. We're going to pick up those. And we're going to warp straight to EG. And upgrade our Nagakiba to plus 25. So after getting our Nagakiba up to plus 25, we're going to warp back to Crumbling Faramazula. I am going to speed up my route, but I am going to show the route I take. I basically take the most direct route to the Godskin Duo fight, which is going to be our next boss battle. So please follow me on screen, and we'll see you at the boss fight. So before entering the boss fight, we're going to want to craft sleep pots. You can craft as many as you need. I went ahead and craft the maximum amount of containers I had, which is 8. Then I put them on the same hotbar as my healing and FP flask. I have them ready because that's going to be the first thing to do is put them to sleep. You have Bernal here to help you out if you need to. Do not forget you also have a plus 10 mimic summon from part two so here's the boss fight the strategy is to put them to sleep as fast as possible we have skinny down now we're working on fatty when they're both asleep go ahead and do your flask golden vow blood flame blade howl of shabriri refill your fp and go after them now when you're doing howl of shabriri Make sure that you stand far away from them as they will take damage and wake up. may be able to kill them in one cycle, I was not able to, so I refilled my FP because the sleep pots use FP. Wait near these two graves because one of them will spawn in. I tried to time the sleep pot, it doesn't look like I did so I threw another one. And you don't need to beat both of them as long as their shared health bar is depleted, the boss fight is over with. Skinny usually gives me trouble when I'm throwing sleep pots at him. And my buffs ran out, so I went ahead and rebuffed. Again, Howl Shabriri, make sure you're not standing near them. So with the boss fight done, we're going to put two points into Vigor, one point into Dexterity. We now have access to the rest of Crumbling Faramazula, which allows us to complete Alexander's questline. 
So warp over to Star Scourge Radon's arena. Exhaust Alexander's dialogue there. Then we're going to warp to the Erd Tree Gazing Hill side of Grace. And we're going to head into Mount Gelmir. I'm going to speed up the route, but go ahead and follow me on screen. And we'll see you in a second. There is a magma worm in this lava that you can fight if you so choose. I chose not to, but if you do, he gives you around 20,000 runes. So go ahead and speak with Alexander, exhaust his dialogue, and we're going to warp back to Crumbling Faramazula. And it's going to be the Dragon Temple Altar Site of Grace. And follow me on screen as I head towards Alexander and finish his questline for the Shard of Alexander. Just past this enemy, and my character is pointing at it slightly, and I will go towards it. There is a ancient dragon smithing stone, if you would so like to pick up. Since we don't need it for the build, I did not pick it up, but it is there if you choose so to pick it up. Don't forget to pick up this golden seed. And as we're approaching Alexander, you're going to want to exhaust his dialogue. And you're going to kindly ask him to give you his shard. You are ready then, I take it. Then let us begin. I am the great Jar warrior. I am Mist Alexander. <laughs> the shard of Alexander is going to boost our weapon skill spinning slash by 15%. So we're going to put that in in lieu of the Ritual Sword Talisman. So our loadout for the most part will be the Lord of Blood's Exaltation, Shard of Alexander, Wigan's Sword Insignia, and Millicent's Prosthesis. For bosses or enemies that do not bleed, we will you can switch out the Lord of Blood's Exaltation for the Ritual Sword Talisman. I did not do it in this guide, but I will go ahead and mention it when it is optimal to replace the Lord of Blood's Exaltation. We have a gargoyle duo fight coming up next. At this point, it would be good to swap out the Lord of Blood's Exaltation for the Ritual Sword Talisman. So let's hand over the twinned armor set to D's brother. This will give you access to D in the gargoyle duo fight. Here's his summon sign. You also have a plus 10 mimic tier from part two. So you have help with the gargoyle duo fight if you so choose. I chose to fight them on my own. Here is how I went on with this fight. When I approach the first one, I throw a throwing knife at him so he doesn't idle. He's going to do a slash or triple slash with his sword. Usually he'll follow that up with a vacuum slice, so go ahead and dodge to the side. Try to whittle his health or kill him before the second gargoyle spawns in. I did get a little bit beat up by him, but he does die pretty much soon. So once he is down, it'll just be you and the Twin Blade Gargoyle. The Twin Blade Gargoyle for me is a little bit more difficult than the Axe Gargoyle. Also that poison cloud that they spit out, not only does it build up poison, which will do damage over time, but you being in the cloud will also do damage to you. So be careful if you start spamming the poison cloud. I do again get a little bit beat up in this. Luckily, we have invested enough points into Vigor. This attack, I am not very good at dodging. Luckily, I was able to tank it and punish it a little bit. Again, just follow me on screen. Try to stay near, try to stay not too far away so he doesn't spam the poison attack. And keep Blood Flame on your Nagakiba as much as possible. The extra fire damage helps out with the physical damage that you are doing. When you 
get his health to about 60% or less, he goes into phase two. When he does that slam with his axe, there's an area of effect. So if you're nearby, you need to dodge the slam with the axe and the area of effect. So at least a double dodge. And down goes the gargoyle duo. Now head north and rest in the coffin. This is going to take you to deep root depths and closer to our next remembrance boss, Fortisex. Going to speed up this next part, but go ahead and follow me on screen. I'm going to take this route to the right. In this cave, there's going to be five ants, I believe, that have bubbles. You're going to want to pop, pop those bubbles to get the Newman's Rune. Those are going to help us level up in a minute here. So now we've made it just outside of Fortisax's arena. Let's go ahead and level up. We're going to put one into Dexterity. We're going to enter the arena. And in this arena, there is Fia's champs, which we must take care of first. There's going to be two one-on-one -on -one fights. And the last fight will be you versus three of her champs. Again, I'm going to mention it, but you have the Mimic tier. If you have trouble fighting these guys, Go ahead and summon your Mimic tier. After you take down Rogier, before the trio spawns in, reapply Howl of Shabriri since that's our shortest lasting buff. With this trio, you're going to want to avoid the middle one or take him down as much as possible. He's the named one, that's Lionel the Lionhearted. With Fia's champs down, switch to the Golden Scarab if you'd like. Then you're going to speak to Fia and choose the second option. The one that says, I no, I want to be held. You're going to need to exhaust your dialogue. This takes a good long minute, so I went ahead and cut out this most of it. But you do have to hug her at least two to three times. Oh After I exhaust her dialogue, times. I rest at the side of Grace and then go back and talk to her. She gives you a Baldekin's Blessing, which lowers your max health by 5%. So you want to use that before going into Fortisax's arena. Warp to the side of Grace to reset your health. I'm going to allocate our flasks. We're going to put 4 blue and 9 red. So 9 healing and 4 FP. Enter the deathbed dream. And we are now ready to fight Fortisax. With Fortisax... You want to stay close and watch out for when she stands up. You also want to watch out for the area damage that you can see in front of you. That's Death Blight. If your Death Blight meter fills up, 
it's instant death. On her fire attack, you can just strafe it, run to the side, and then run straight at her. There is no way to target her legs. There she is standing up, so she's going to slam lightning into the ground more than likely. You can either go to the side of it, dodge through it. You'll also notice that my character is glowing with lightning right there. After a few seconds, it will glow a lot brighter and then explode. And if you don't run away or dodge away from it, it will do damage to you. She does beat me up a little bit, but she does not have that much health. Just be careful with her slams. Be careful if she flies into the air. If she flies into the air, she can do three attacks, I believe. One of them is a fire attack. Another one is a lightning attack. And another one is a slam attack. I don't believe she gets to do it against me, but those are three attacks to watch out for if she goes into the air. And down she goes. Switch to the Golden Scarab if you so choose. With her down, you now have another ending. You have Fia's ending, the Mending Rune of the Death Prince. So you have Ronnie's ending and Fia's ending and the standard ending to choose from. This is purely optional, but you can kill D here and get his armor back and his weapon, the Inseparable Sword. But expired meat and <laughs> then you are a blight, a defiler of the golden order and murderer of my brother. Die, die, die. I'll grind your corpse into that vile weapon. <sighs> With D down, you can loot his corpse for the twinned armor set and the inseparable sword. It is a strength and faith scaling weapon that does physical and holy damage. We're not going to use it, but I was just showing that you can acquire it from his body. So our next stop is going to be the Albaneric village. So we're going to warp to Laskyar ruins. We're going to run to the Albaneric village. You can talk to this Albanaric. I just kill him. It's a little bit faster. That gives you the right half of the Haley Tree Secret Medallion. The other half is in the northern part of the mountaintops of the giants in Castle Soul. So we're going to warp to the freezing lake side of Grace and run north and west. But let's go ahead and spend our runes first. We're going to put three into dexterity. So we're going to have 55 dexterity after leveling up here. Use the runes that you got from Deep Root Depths to get to as many runes as you need to make sure that you get the 3 to dexterity. So we have Commander Neil. He is going to summon two Spectral Banished Knights. I like to take out the one on the right first, the one that's dual wielding the great swords. After taking him out, you want to take out the one with the shield. After you take out the one with the shield, it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one with Commander Neol. With Commander Neol, when you see him spinning his weapon like that, you want to be standing away from him. Usually, he'll follow that up with the charge. You want to roll away from the charge and then get away from Commander Neol as he slams his weapon down. And that also does an area of effect damage to you. Here, I didn't roll away from it right away. I tried to get a swipe in. I got slightly punished for it. He's going to do this charge attack. After this charge attack, he gets tired, which will give you a big punishment window. You should be able to stance break him right here too. Go for the critical, move away and regroup. I tried to get in another couple of swipes, but I recommend moving away and filling up your FP, putting on Blood Flame Blade, and just regrouping. So again, he does a charge attack, which you want to roll and then get away from him. If he slams his foot into the ground, that usually means he's going to be doing a jump attack. When he's at the height of his jump, you want to roll away right before he starts coming down. I did not, and I got stepped on. 
He has long reach with his weapon too, so after running, rolling away from that jump attack, you want to get away from him as quick as possible. With Commander Neol down, we can go up this lift and get the other half to the secret medallion to the Halic Tree. We're going to be entering the Consecrated Snowfields, so we want to warp to the Grand Lift of Rold. When we stand on it, you want to hit left or right on the D-pad and make sure it says Hoist Secret Medallion. Now, once we get to our first Site of Grace, we're going to want to level up. We're going to put two into Dexterity. So go ahead and use runes to complete the level. We're heading north. There is one golden seed on the way. We're going to rest at the next site of grace, which should be pretty much smack in the middle of the consecrated snowfields. We're going to change the time to nighttime. It's already nighttime for me, so I just sat there to reset this caravan that's being pulled to the west. Here, there's going to be a duo knight's cavalry. We're going to fight them mainly for the runes. We are here at the consecrated snowfields for a few reasons. The main reason being to acquire the thorny crack tier which is the last tier we need for our physic and to level up there are a few enemies here that give quite a few runes and they are not that difficult to defeat the knight's cavalry duo is one of them so i try to fight them one on one i bait this one with the flail and as i showed you in part two the way to fight these is to stick to the left Try to stick to the Knight's Cavalry's left, which is your right. Usually if you do, they do that. They'll do a stop where you can punish them either with the Ash of War or with R1s. Either way, make quick work of this Knight's Cavalry, do a critical on his downed body, and now there's only one left. The other one is on the west side of that caravan. So go ahead and fill up your FP first. You can put on Blood Flame Blade as well. I'm using the Dagger Golden Vow, but you can also put on your Physic and use the Incantation if you'd like. Then you'd have access to Howl of Shabriri as well. As you can see though, with just Blood Flame Blade and the Dagger Ash of War Golden Vow, these Knights Cavalry are not that difficult to take down. However, use everything that you have at your disposal if you so choose. For them, I did switch to the Golden Scarab. Without it, I believe they give you around 80,000 runes. Probably a little bit more than 80,000. With the Golden Scarab, you get 100,000 runes. Next, we're going to head north and get invaded by Anastasia. She is going to net you around 90,000 runes, I believe. So if you haven't drank your Physic yet, go ahead and drink it and put on all your buffs. She's an NPC, so you can either do running charge attacks against her or the Ash of War should be able to stun lock her enough for you to take her down. And one running R2 and a full Ash of War combo takes her down. Let's go ahead and head to the map. Pick up the map and around this map you're also going to want to farm these Rhymed Crystal Bud. We're going to need these in the future to craft Freezing Pot. This tree, in my opinion, is the best place to farm these. Now, I only farmed them that one time, but if you need to farm them multiple times, you can go ahead and do so. We're going to head towards Ordina, rest at the site of Grace, put in one into Dexterity, and now we're going to head east to the Minor Earth Tree. 
The Miner Earth Tree is holding the last tier that we need, which is the Thorny Crack tier. This one is a putrid avatar, so when he jumps, you want to make sure that you are not in front of it as it spews out Scarlet Rot. That builds up Scarlet Rot on your character and also does a damage, an area of, area of effect damage. When it slams its weapon into the ground like that, go ahead and jump and torrent and ride around it. Once Golden Land is done, you can dismount torrent and continue attacking it. Watch for the stomp attack. Watch for the jump attack. Try to punish it from the side or from the rear. Once you have taken it out, switch to the Golden Scarab because you have plenty of time on this one. That will net you around 190,000 runes and the thorny crack tier this is the last tier that we need in our physic and it will be situational i will let you know when to use the thorny crack tier and when to use the dexterity tier for now let's go ahead and level up let's put one point into vigor two into dexterity after leveling up we're going to head back to crumbling faramazula and continue on towards our next boss fight which is going to be the Draconic Tree Sentinel. Before that though, there is going to be one dragon that I take down. I recommend you take it down because it already starts off with low health. So it is fairly easy to take down. If you have trouble with it though, go ahead and skip it. So go ahead and warp back to the Dragon Temple Lift. Head on down and head in. Under this, this, you're going to find the Dragon Crest Shield Talisman plus 2. This is also another talisman that you can switch off to instead of the Lord of Blood's Exaltation. Here is the dragon I was talking about. So if you get under it, you can attack the rear leg or the front legs, but the rear leg is a lot more safe. Careful with the slam. As you can see, it had very little health. That nets you around 30,000 runes and another ancient dragon smithing stone. And there's a somber ancient dragon smithing stone which you can pick up if you'd like. So here we're going to switch out the dexterity tier for the thorny crack tier for the fight against the draconic tree sentinel. Now again this one is optional. You can run past him and go straight to Malekith if you'd like. I don't believe he is that difficult of a boss. Yes, I say that as he almost takes me down, but you should be able to take him down. If you don't want to fight this mini boss, you can just run past him, go up to the boss fog wall, Quit out, load back in, and the Draconic Tree Sentinel will not aggro on you when you load back in. With his runes though, and runes that we have in our inventory, we can add one more to Dexterity. For the next fight, we're also going to be changing our Physic. We're going to have the Faith tier and the Dexterity tier. So swap out the Thorny tier for the Dexterity tier. I'm going to speed it up, but follow me on screen as we go fight another NPC. So this is an optional fight also. The reason that we're going to fight him, or at least that I show you how and where to fight him, is by fighting and defeating this NPC, you're going to get the Blasphemous Claw. The Blasphemous Claw can be useful in your fight against Malekith, which is going to be our next Remembrance boss fight. I do not personally use it, but you can use it to parry his attacks when his sword glows yellow. Again, I don't use it, but I am at least showing you where to get it, so if you so choose to use it, you can do so. With Bernal down, let's warp to the Beside the Great Bridge side of Grace, head into the boss fog, 
We still have the Faith and Dexterity tier. With Malekith, he's very aggressive. Right here, he's in his Beast Clergyman form. He's going to do a Claw Attack first, which you can jump over, roll through, or go around. I use a Pillar. He'll do a Jab, two Side Swipes, usually a Jab after that, and then a Downward Slam. Downward Slam, you want to back away from, and then punish with your Ash of War. Roll from when he does that throw. Roll backwards on the fast side swipe. Run behind him on the slow swipe. Punish with the National War. Roll and wait for him to continue his cycle. Now with phase two, he's going to be in his Malekith form. You want to watch when he does his jump attacks. However, you can get a great punish on his initial attack, and I'll explain right here during the cutscene. When you are loaded in, you want to step back a few steps. I run to the right, and after his first swipe, I run in and do a full Ash of War combo. Usually, you can do two. Down goes Malekith, make sure to switch to the Golden Scarab as you have plenty of time during his death animation. Once his death animation is over and the cutscene's over, we're going to get warped to Lanedale, Capital of Ash, and we're getting closer to the end game. If you are not able to take him down at the beginning like I did, he does a lot of jumping around, which you want to avoid. He usually shoots his Blade of Death, or he does Destined Death. Those are the two main attacks you want to watch out for against Malekith. So after this cutscene's over, we're going ahead and level up. We're going to put three points into Dexterity. And also, we're going to switch our Physic for the next fight. We're going to want to put the Faith tier with the Thorny Crack tier. So we're switching Dexterity for Thorny. This is going to be against Gideon. Try to get him in his first phase. The best thing to do is to put on all your buffs and do not attack him right away. Do not start attacking until he says the word Lord. Ah, I knew you'd come to stand before the Elden Ring to become Elden Lord. What a sad state of affairs. I commend your spirit, but alas, none I will in my bones. So with Gideon down, go ahead and switch to the Gold Scarab as you have plenty of time during his dying monologue. After his monologue and going to the Grace, we're going to be leveling up. We're going to put two points into Dexterity. Also, we're going to switch our Physic. Instead of the Thorny Crack tier, we're going to put in the Dexterity, not Crystal tier. So it's going to be the Faith tier and the Dexterity tier against Godfrey. With Godfrey, he has a Godfrey Phase 1, Phase 2, and a Horolu Phase 1, Phase 2. In Godfrey Phase 1, you want to watch out for the Stomp Attack and the Overhead Axe Attack. On the opening attack, he usually always does that, sliding his axe into the ground. You can either run around him like I did, or run away from him. You'll see that I try to roll his Area of Effect Stomp Attack, and I get punished by it. It's more consistent to just jump over it. You can jump straight up. You don't have to jump to the side into him or away from him. Now here he's going to do his ground slam after this stomp. As you see, he twirls his axe, slams it into the ground. You want to run away. I try to run to the side of him so I don't get hit by that area of effect. And those are his main attacks. When he pauses and then stomps, that means he's in his Godfrey Phase 2. Godfrey Phase 2, every time he does a stamp, it's an area of effect over the whole arena.
And here he's transitioning into phase two. So every time he stomps, the whole arena will hurt you if you don't roll or jump. When he gets to about half health, he goes into his Horalu phase and he has a phase one, phase two there as well. run away because he usually does that grab attack he can do that stomp attack or jump into the air when he opens his arms wide like that he's doing a grab attack you want to dodge as he is at his peak I usually try to just stay away from poor Lou there's another one of his grab attacks you can punish it here's that shout that means he's jumping into the air and he's going to do another area of effect attack which you just want to run away from. On Here's another grab attack. Unfortunately, I don't dodge it. Luckily, again, we have enough vigor to tank it. When he gets to about one third or so of his life left, he'll start transitioning into this phase two. That's his transition. Watch for the area of effect. He does two of them. Luckily, we don't have to deal with phase two for that long. As the blood flame bleed proc hits him. Switch to the golden scarab if you'd like. And after this fight we're going to level up. We're going to put 4 points into dexterity. Right here is a good time to mention. That you can switch out the lord of blood's exaltation. For either the dragon crest shield. Or the ritual sword. If you want defense go with the dragon crest shield plus 2. If you want more offense and you think you can stay at full life, go with the Ritual Sword. We're also going to be switching out our Physic. Instead of the Dexterity tier, we're going to use the Thorny Crack tier. So for our Physic, the Faith tier, and the Thorny tier, for Talisman, switch out the Lord of Blood for the Dragon Crest Shield plus 2 or Ritual Sword. Now here we have the opening the Radagon. You should be able to get one attack and a full Ash of War combo. With Radagon, it's hard for me to give tips as I'm not very good at fighting him. But basically, watch for his jump attack which he telegraphs by putting his right foot up. Watch for him to come down and slam. Luckily, we get a stance break and we take a good chunk of his life. He should be doing the hammer attack after this where he pounds the hammer into the ground. That does an area of effect which you want to watch out. It's two quick ones followed by a third slow one. Unfortunately I got punished by the second one. But Radagon should be going down right here. When he puts up his left arm like that he's going to grab you. So I choose to run away from it. You can try to roll it if you want. He's about to go down. So make sure that your FP is as close to full as possible. When you do take him down, try to put on as many buffs as possible. I usually do Hallow Shabriri, Blood Flame Blade, and Golden Vow. At the start of the Elden Beast fight, you're going to want to do a full Ash of War in front of Elden Beast. After that, you're going to want to run to the side and slightly behind him. Should be able to get three full Ashes of War before he runs away. Sometimes he'll do melee attacks after that. Here he chose to go into the sky and do the ring. I put on golden bow, turn away from him, start walking away, jump over the ring, and he should appear in front of you. Now this is gonna be a series of melee attacks. This is gonna be just two. When you see him do a stabbing motion with his right hand, that means it's just going to be a double melee. This one's going to be a triple melee, as you can see the first one was delayed. The last melee is going to be a slam down. You should be able to punish it. So he either does two melee attacks or three melee attacks. As long as you dodge them all, there's a huge punish window.
if you're able able to get a stance break do another full ash of war and a first part of the ash of war go for the critical and continue spamming your ash of war right there if i would have been able to hit the fight would have been over i wasn't able to and now he's going to do the triple rings again face away from him wait for the rings to appear just jump over them and give him his last slash Congratulations, you did it. Switch to the Golden Scarab if you want to continue fighting Remembrance bosses. If you don't, congratulations, you just beat Elden Ring. Now let's go ahead and level up. We're going to be putting 5 into Dexterity and 1 into Faith. For now, we're done with Dexterity. With Millicent's Prosthesis, we have 80 Dexterity and have reached the last soft cap for Dexterity. We are going to focus on leveling up faith if you continue. We're going to try to get to 33 faith. That way we don't need to use the faith tier anymore for our buffs. So here I'm showing you that by using this guide you have access to three different endings. You have Fia's ending, the Mending Rune of the Death Prince. You have Rani's ending. And you have the generic ending. I went ahead and chose the Mending Rune of the Death Prince. If you are not going to continue with this guide, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. If you are going to continue, we're going to finish off the Remembrance bosses. We're going to go after Dragonlord Placidusex, Moog, the and Melania in that order. Of the Again, Duskborn. if this is it for you, thank you for watching. Please watch for my next video, it's going to be on the Rivers of Blood, which you can use this character as your template for. And we're going to go to the round table after the credits, and I'm going to show you that we beat 12 out of 15 Remembrance bosses in about 7.5 hours. We ended off at level 130. Thanks again. Now for those that are going to continue to stay. We're going to make a quick side trip to Weeping Peninsula. This is purely optional. I'm going to buy some Kukri. As you saw at the end of my Elden Beast fight, I ran out of Kukri. I like to keep a healthy stock of Kukri on my character. This is purely optional. But this helps uh, sustain stance damage that you're doing to bosses, enemies, etc. So next stop is going to be Crumbling Faramazula. I'm going to speed up this next section. So just follow me on screen. We're going to fight Dragonlord Placidusex. Dragonlord Placidusex, it did take me a couple of tries. Again, I'm going to remind everybody, you have a plus 10 mimic tier that can help you out if you need it. Basically, with Dragonlord Placidusex, he starts off the fight the same. So put on your buffs right about where my character starts to put on their buffs. Stop at this line right here. He's going to start with an area of effect lightning. You'll see the lightning on the ground before it hits. So you have plenty of time to run out of the area. So here's the first wave. Just run out of it. I put on Hallow Shabriri since it's the shortest buff right after the first lightning. Here comes the second round of lightning. Fill up my FP. After the third round of lightning is when I start attacking. Be careful attacking though and getting out of the area of effect. Here he might do a fire breath attack. He does a turnaround. He's probably going to swipe with his left hand, roll underneath it, and try to jump over the tail because he's doing a fire breath attack for sure. 
you don't make it to the tail, just at least run away from the fire. This gives you a big window to punish him. Other attacks that he has will be going into the sky and teleporting. Uh, he can also throw boulders at you. And he, if you are on his left side, there's a chance that he can try to swipe you with his wing. Got a stance break, so I'm gonna do one Ash of War on his head and then go for the critical. I wasn't sure if I had time for the full Ash of War. You at least want to get one attack off on his head before you do the critical. Now he's going to start teleporting. Run to the closest edge of the arena as possible and look towards the middle, to the sides. Look for him in the sky. Dodge at the last moment. He'll do a couple of teleportation swipes. We'll try to dodge those at the last moment. I believe I get hit by one. There's one right there. He's going to continuously teleport and dive into you. So just keep on running towards the edge. The reason we're doing this is so when he does a laser attack, he hopefully is in front of you and facing away from you and doesn't laser into you. Now unfortunately or fortunately he landed very far away again just continuously go to the edge I just spam rolled out of panic luckily none of the lasers hit me and slowly make your way back towards Placidusex normally he would land near you and you'd be able to position yourself behind him so the lasers don't hit you you see him put his left arm like that He's going to do an area of effect attack around him. Just run away from it. And as soon as the boulders drop down, you can run in and punish him. Down goes Placidusex, make sure to switch to the Gold Scarab to get the extra runes. And let's go ahead and spend those runes. We're going to put one into Mind and continue to boost Faith. Mind, we're going to keep at 16. Again, we're putting points into Faith to get it to 33 so we can cast all of our buffs without having to use the Faith tier. Next, we'll be going after Moog, so make sure you have Moog Shackle from Part 2 and the Purifying Crystal tier. Now, I don't use the Purifying Crystal tier. However, if you do have trouble with Moog and aren't able to beat him without it, I suggest using the Faith tier and the Purifying Crystal tier. Moog Shackle, you can use it twice and only in phase one before he counts down to one. Afterwards, through Welcome Nihil and after in phase two, you will not be able to use it. 
So make sure that you use it wisely before he gets down to one on his countdown. In both phases, he scatters blood flame all over the place, which if you walk through it, does slight damage and does blood loss buildup. Make sure you switch to the Golden Scarab for the extra rune bonus. We're going to go ahead and spend the runes. We're going to continue to level up Faith. This time we have enough to do plus 4 to Faith. Again, we're trying to get to 33 Faith so we can cast all of our buffs without the Faith tier. Let's head back to the Consecrated Snowfield, Inner Consecrated Snowfield Site of Grace. We're going to head east. There are octopus around, which you would like to recruit for our next boss encounter. It's going to be against the magma worm Theodorix. These enemies will help you in staggering Theodorix. Also, hopefully he keeps his aggression on the octopus. Get a gold pickle foul foot ready, because when he is close to death, we're going to pop the gold pickle foul foot, and we're going to switch to the gold scarab for the double extra room bonus. With Theodorix and the Octopus, and if you're using your Mimic tier, pretty much just let them take the aggro and try to get behind Theodorix. I attack his tail or his midsection as much as possible. I try to stay away from his swipes. Again, when he's staggered, it's possible you might be able to do a full Ash of War. I only do the first part and then go for the critical hit. And as soon as these octopus get in, I run away as quick as I can. And again, the octopus help you with another stagger. Since we're near the head, go for the full Ash of War combo. Get the critical, get your gold pickle foul foot ready to pop, and get ready to switch to the gold scarab. So with the almost 300,000 runes we have from Theodorix, let's put two points into faith. We are going to head back to the mountaintops of the giants. We're going to fight the minor Erd tree that is in the central area. As you can see, just southwest of the freezing lake side of Grace. We're just going to fight them to complete another level and we'll finally have 33 faith. So let's go ahead and put one into faith and we're done leveling up faith and dexterity. From here on out, if you'd like to continue to level up, you can level up vigor. Now instead of the faith tier, we're going to put in the green spill crystal tier and then the thorny crack tier and the dexterity tier we can still swap out. Let's head back to Volcano Manor first and purchase Assassin's Gambit. We're going to apply that to a dagger for the next section. In the next section, we're going to be heading towards the Halic Tree. 
There is a puzzle we need to complete though, and Assassin's Gambit on the dagger is going to help us out. Just go ahead and go to the side of grace and apply Assassin's Gambit, Gambit to any dagger and equip the dagger. You may have to change gloves or take off your gloves so you are not in heavy load. So I show my full route. I do not speed it up. You can follow me exactly on screen. But basically we're going to light the south light first. Then the north light. Then we're going to drop down and light the east light. And the west light will be the last one to light. Just follow my character on screen. After we light this first one, we're going to put on an Assassin's Gambit. It does not make us completely invisible, but the detection will be a lot more delayed than if we do not have it on. Once we are starting to get detected, we need to roll so we do not get hit by the arrows being spammed by the protectors here. So as you see, you can still survive one volley of arrows if the Albanar connected with another volley of arrows, more than likely that would have been death. Now the reason I am sticking on the rooftops is if you stay on ground level, there are invisible assassins. I believe there's two. I know there's at least one, but I believe that there are two. So stick to the rooftops as much as possible. On this ground one, when you light this third one, there's no way to avoid it, but there's going to be an invisible assassin. Just quickly light it, and what I do which this is the best advice I can give you is just spam roll try to get out of that corner that I get trapped in and run west but where you lit the first light you're going to jump up there because the assassin does not follow you if you take this path up there just follow my lead on screen Now once you light this last light, there's going to be a teleporter that's going to be activated at the north section of this part of town. Go through the teleporter, that's going to take you to the Halig tree. I cut out the running to Loretta, it's a pretty straight shot. You can explore if you'd like, but I just run straight through the teleporter and straight to Loretta. Now with this Loretta, Knight of the Halic Tree, the battle is going to be pretty much the same as you had with Loretta at Caria Manor. The only difference is this Loretta can bleed, so our Lord of Blood's Exaltation will come into play here. She has a Phase 1 where she shoots a single shot at you. In Phase 2, she'll glow a little bit stronger and she will shoot multiple projectiles at you. So I believe around 50 to 60% health remaining is when she enters phase 2. She's going to be entering it right after this combo. There's a brighter glow. There's a bleed proc. So now when she shoots projectiles at you, it's going to be multiple projectiles. Just dodge at the last second. When she shoots her bow at you, it's going to be multiple projectiles from the bow as well. When she does the bow attack, I wait for the last second and dodge into the arrows. Pretty soon here, she's going to do another variant of Loretta Slash, which is a delayed version. Just try to time it, do not dodge too early, and punish her after she's done with her combo. Loretta is down, let's go ahead and spend the runes. 
We're going to put two points into Vigor. Now the path to Melania has been opened up. However, let's head back to Liernia and back to Caria Manor. I had to go to road to the manor side of Grace, but if you have the Grace right outside of Caria Manor, warp there. You want to go on ahead in and head to the right, which is southeast. There is a cookbook, the Glintstone Craftsman Cookbook number six, allows you to craft freezing pots. They're going to be a very great help against Melania. If you throw it at her as soon as she starts waterfowl dance, the frost proc can get you to eliminate it. Now I only have one ritual pot, so let's go pick some up. My first stop is going to be to Raya Lucaria Academy at the schoolhouse classroom side of Grace. Towards where you, before you fought Red Wolf, there's a chest. There's one ritual pot there. Let's go ahead and pick that one up. Next stop is going to be Dragon Barrel. So we're going to warp to Fort Ferrith and head west as you see on screen. So this is a northwest section of Dragon Barrel and I'm showing you again where we're heading. I'll put a marker there. There's a merchant that sells a ritual pot. Let's go ahead and purchase it. Now since I was here and since it was nighttime, this is completely optional. But there is a nighttime boss that spawns, Elmer of the Briar, the bell bearing hunter. If you want to fight him, you can. It is not necessary. However, you shouldn't have any problems fighting him. Just put on all your boosts. Go ahead and start attacking before he fully spawns in. And you'll have most of his health taken away. Now let's head to Ronnie Rise Side of Grace. We're going back into Caria Manor, but through the rooftop. On the way, you can fight Blyde. This is completely optional. He will drop his weapon and his armor set. Again, this is completely optional. If you fight him or not, just continue to head east. And you're going to go drop down into Caria Manor from the roof. You're going to get Pitya's Bell Bearing. Take it back to the round table and purchase the last ritual pot that I get. So here we are at Pitya's body. Let's go ahead and pick up his bell bearing. We're going to go back to the round table and give it to the twin maiden husks. And the most important thing to purchase will be the ritual pot. There are other things that I purchase as well, such as a larval tear and other stuff. But do not worry about that. The ritual pot is the most important thing that you need to purchase. So I am using these remembrances for the runes so I can level up. I'm going to put one more point into Vigor and that is going to get me as close to zero runes as possible. Heed my words. I am Melania, Blade of Mikola. And I have never known defeat. 
Now I'm not the best at fighting Melania. It did take me about five or six tries to get her. The best advice I can give you is not to spam any attacks. Be very wary of Waterfowl. Be very wary whenever she's making any moves. She gets a lot of hyper armor on a lot of her moves. She should be starting a Waterfowl soon. What I do to get her to start Waterfowl is I'll throw a Kukri at her. And that is why I like to keep Kukris on hand. Once I see her go up in the air, I run away after the first two. And on the third one, roll into her. That's the way I deal with Waterfowl. Melania is definitely a tough boss. Definitely will test your skill. Again, you have the Mimic. If you need to use the Mimic to beat her, by all means. The very first time I fought her, I had to use the Mimic as well. And probably a bunch of times after that. So since she's close to phase 2, I went ahead and buffed up my blade. Since she was just idling, I chucked Kukri's at her. Again, let her do two flurries, and on the third flurry, I attacked her. At the beginning of phase two, she'll be wrapped in what looks like an onion. What you want to do, or what I do, is I unlock the camera, Wait. run towards her, and then run to the right. This works for me 99% of the time, and she doesn't land on me. Once she lands, you can throw a freezing pot at her, you can put on buffs, just be prepared for phase two as it is much harder than phase one. She adds what is called a clone attack in phase two. That attack kills me seven out of ten times. I am not very good at dodging it. And as you can see, the frost proc took 1300 damage off of her life. When she's at about one third, you're in danger Terry for clone attack. This is why I start backing up and running away. What I do for clone attack is I just run away from it. If you're good enough, I'm sure you can roll through it. I'm not good enough, so I just run away from it. Try to look for an opening and do not be overly aggressive. She does the onion at least one more time as you're fighting her if you don't deplete her health rapidly. The stages that she'll do the onion will be around 50% I believe of health remaining and around maybe 33% or 25% of health remaining. Here's the onion. I didn't have time or space to run towards her and to the right so I waited at the last second rolled out of the way got out of the onion because of the area of effect damage and you have a small window where you can attack her as she's getting up. Extraordinary. And down the goes mark. Melania. And that is 15 out of 15 Remembrance bosses. Do not forget to switch to the Gold Scarab if you're going to continue this character oh, onto New Game Plus. Thank you for watching the video. Oh, I Nicola. really appreciate it. I my really brother. appreciate the comments and the views on my first I'm two videos. Sorry. I really hope everybody I enjoyed this new match. series I've put together. Again, the next weapon I'll be focusing on will be Rivers of Blood. And here we are. I want to show you that we did 15 out of 15 remembrances. Every remembrance done. Again, I'm going to show you a preview of the next weapon I'll be showcasing on my next series of videos. It's probably going to be shorter because it's going to be New Game Plus, so there's a lot less setup. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.